So you were at Humu for a bit over a year uh, yep. as a data scientist before you were promoted to a senior data scientist. So is there at Humu like a strict definition of what the difference is between those two levels of seniority? And how did you pull it off? What was involved in getting that promotion? Definitely. So another quirk of startups is that they're typically very flat. They don't try to implement levels too quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at least for the startups I've been at. But when I joined, that was when they're, uh, I think it was probably, I think that was year three or four uh, of, of the company. And they're like, all right, we're at a point where we need to implement levels. And so um, I just had correct timing where, uh, where senior data scientists made sense. And uh, one thing about working at Humu, I work with like behavior economics kind of thing and making work better. Um, there's a field called IO psychology, and a lot of my colleagues, um, industrial and science, organizational psychology, yes. not input uh, output psychology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so uh, the data science team fits within the people science team, which is like the IO psychologist, right? And so, because we have all this amazing like expertise, so like. PhDs and masters who like devoted their life to like understanding workforces. Um, they also create our levels. <laughs> they also create our interview processes. And so uh, my manager, uh, and I've been asking her to share it more publicly. I wish one day I'll convince her. Uh, she created this whole leveling system for different tracks on the data science team, whether it's, uh, you know, what's, what's the qualities of a, junior data scientist versus a regular data scientist versus the senior staff, right? Um, what does this track look like if you want to be an IC in analytics, an IC in product? Or maybe you want to go down the manager path. Contributor. Yes. Sorry for adding all the acronyms. Okay, that's um, thanks, for, for. <laughs> thanks for clarifying. Um, but the amount of thought she put into it, and she did like a whole literature review on like what this means and talked to other other leaders. Um uh, there cool. is a very big distinction, at least at our company, but that may not yeah. be the case for every single company. I think we're just at a unique environment where we just have the expertise to really think about this properly. Yeah. Um, and so they're going to leverage that. Um, and so my manager was able to very clearly articulate what were the things I was missing to make the jump to senior data scientists. And such as, one, such as, <laughs> and I think, I think the key thing was moving away from being task based to actually coming up and um, organizing your own projects, yeah. uh, creating a plan to deliver your own projects, but more importantly, choosing projects that moves the needle forward for a business metric. And so that's the, the key difference. And so it was a strange transition because when I first started my career, um, you know, you're given a ticket and your work output is basically defined by your manager, whoever's in charge of like triaging the tickets. And the more work you do, the better. <laughs> but when you're trying to make that jump to actually being on the senior level, the more work you do is actually bad <laughs> uh, because you're just going to be burned out because, oh. because <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> because <laughs> here's the thing. Once you get to the senior level, you have the option to work on anything, especially at a startup. So you could be working on a lot of stuff and burn out. You can be right. working on a lot of things that are the wrong thing to focus on. So you'll always you were, be busy. I thought you were going to say, now that I'm a senior data scientist, I get to spend all my time on the beach. That's just outside my apartment. Yeah. Rest, rest, invest all day. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I'm not resting, investing. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's in the closet all day, toiling away. <laughs> uh, but that was a key distinction. So like when, when I made, was trying to make that jump, I was really tired and almost burning out because I was trying to do everything and my manager was able to say like hey mark you're doing a lot which is great but like you need to prioritize better you need to understand what's going to be the high ticket things and know when to take something off um and so i really worked on that skill with her um and as i said earlier one of that big projects was increasing data access within the company so that was the project where i was able to identify an opportunity that drove the needle forward was a strategic initiative and was something I kind of scoped out myself and was leading the charge on. And more specifically, thinking about like the strategy side of it, and I would love to give a big shout out to Devin Vashista, um, who does this uh, business strategy for data science course, um, whom who paid for me to do that. And it completely changed the way how I approach data science. And I think that was a really oh, key cool. moment for me 
to to shifting from that junior to like senior level because what from was that, that course class, called again um it was um or the instructor? business strategy for data scientists i believe um and oh. i can find the exact title and send it to you um yeah that'd be great we'll put it in the show that. notes yeah yeah it was it was really transformational for me and so what that did for me it was like where would data science have the most impact for a business and that shift allowed me to think more like a senior data scientist and so before i'd be like well i just need to do a whole bunch of analyses just answer a bunch of questions for the sake of doing data or like build a model or like put out a bunch of PRs. Right. After that course, I was like, I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> um, I took a step back and I thought where in our value stream kind of like how we're providing value to our customers from our products to our uh, customers. Right. And customers are the one that's paying. We're doing enterprise kind of, kind of sales for these things. Um, where is money coming in? And then from there, in that process, what's really high touch that's really hard to do that data and AI can't touch, right? Mm. And for me, I was like, customer success. They're the individuals after sales, taking a customer and guiding them along um, the journey um, to make sure they're happy, but also they resolve issues and they're in charge of something very important, preventing churn and adding expansions for it. And so um, the other option was sales. But as a data scientist for sales, they are bef- the customer is before they come in. So there's less data on them. But customer success are existing customers. So we have all their sales data plus the customer success data and all their product data. So there's more data. They're in charge of this, this, this business metric of expansions and churns. And they're doing high-touch customer engagements. Therefore, through Vin's class, I thought, I need to empower customer success to be rock stars through data and their meetings. How can I do that? What are the questions they're trying to answer with data that they can't right now? And how can I automate as much as possible with data just to make them show up to every meeting and seem so informed? And uh, that was the key project that really pushed me to the senior data science level and was a huge shift in how I thought about approaching data science to drive impact. Amazing. That was such a an excellent specific example of what it took you to transition from a common data scientist to a senior data scientist. And I think you did touch on a lot of the key things that I look for in similar kinds of leveling exercises um, with people that work for me. That specific thing that you mentioned at the beginning of your explanation about going from being somebody that takes tickets. So for those of you who aren't uh, software engineers or aren't involved in the tech space, there's this typical process within tech companies where you try to get the work that needs to be done onto these discrete tickets that indicate uh, you know, exactly what work needs to be done to make some change to the software code base or to develop some new machine learning model. Um, and the more discrete you could make those tickets, the better. And then you kind of you want to have an estimate of how much time you think it's going to take. And Mark actually already alluded to that earlier um, with an example where he was talking about some ticket that was like scoped for five hours that took him 20. Um, so obviously, the, the, the better your estimates um, of, of how complex the ticket is, the more easily you can project how long some big project deliverable um, or some product feature that requires lots of tickets um, is going to take. Um, and also, there's another term. There's another um, you used the term PR. Um, so so yeah. same thing. If you're not a software engineer already, that means pull request. And so this is uh, this means that you're you've requested to integrate code that you've written um, with the code that everyone else has written. Um, mm-hmm. So you know the changes that you've made um, to have that approved. Um, and so yeah. So and this this yeah. Go ahead. I was about to say, and something I would like to add because I'm still on this learning journey. And again, my managers already created these levels all the way up to the past staff, right? And so now I'm looking at, all right, what do I need to do to go to the next level? Do I want to go to the next level? My manager's in a lot of meetings. Do I want to have as many meetings as her? <laughs> and one thing I'm learning is like, and I don't, I don't think I'm trying to gun for a promotion for this next cycle. I'm really enjoying the senior space. <laughs> um, but one of the key things that she's been teaching me a lot is that difference between a senior and a staff I think it really comes down to influence within an organization. How can you clearly identify a problem or opportunity, 
create a strategy around why it's worthwhile to pursue and then create the technical specs, create the whole um, kind of thought process and consistency and buy-in across the organization. Because when you're at this level, you're not working on little small tickets. You're working on like, I want to change the infrastructure of our tech stack. (laughs) And the implications of that are huge, right? Right. Uh, Both good and bad. (laughs) And so um, getting that buy-in is a very long process. Requires a lot of meetings, a lot of listening, a lot of feedback, give and take, and a lot of writing documents, <laughs> less coding and more thinking about the coding. Um, and I think that's the big difference I'm seeing at that staff level of being able to really do that and then delegate it to other people, not as a manager, but as a technical lead. 